Welcome back to another episode of the new Music 5 LA Fish Guide. So it's a little bit before 9 o'clock in the morning on a Friday morning. My pager went off about 30 minutes ago. Uh, apparently, uh, one of my dentist customers, which is up on the second floor, um, supposedly there's a the people below, the dentist office below, is complaining that there's a big leak in the tank and water's running down into their office. So they immediately assume that it's the aquarium upstairs. Uh, I spoke briefly with the office manager who's not in today, and so I called the office and spoke with the receptionist. Uh, she indicated that things appeared to be normal, um, but there was no water movement in the tank. So I'm not real sure what's going on. If there was a leak, you would have expected the water level in the tank to have come down and you would have expected her to have made that comment uh, that she could see the water level or something. So emergency calls are always difficult because you try to get some information <laughs> and the irony is there's a reason that they've hired an aquarium service person is because they either don't want to be involved in the aquarium uh, or don't know anything about it and are afraid to stick their hands in there. So it's hard to glean information uh, in an emergency call. So we've got some extra water on hand. I've got an extra water pump uh, in case that seems to be the problem. Kind of trying to be prepared. So I guess we'll find out here in a few minutes really what the troubles are with the tank and if there's really a leak. Well, this will be the office where the water itself is supposedly run down. We're going to run upstairs to the office that the tank is in. I have to admit, I have a past history with this tank. I was involved in its installation about 10 years ago. One morning after the power had gone out, we received an emergency call that the entire tank had drained itself into the first floor. Well, so far, everything appears to be working as it's supposed to. I can see the disruption at the surface, so the water pump is still pumping water. Let's take a look down in the cabinet below. Wet dry trickle filter appears to be fine. A little bit of water sitting on top of it, but water's flowing through it. There appears to be a, an appropriate water level. Let's take a look on the other side, see if we can find any leaks out of the water pump. No wetness on the floor at all. There's one of the canister filters that was involved in the original uh, spill 10 years ago. Let's take a look to the other side. There's the other canister filter. There's the floor drain. But oddly enough, we don't see any water on the floor and no water in that floor drain. Again, looking down at the bottom, there's no water. Well, there is a little bit of water sitting here on top of the wet dry trickle filter. It does look like that filter pad's a little plugged. Let's take a look at the uh, external overflow, which is how the water exits the tank at one end of the tank. Appears to be fine. I, I, I don't see what's causing uh, a leak at all. The only thing that seems wet is the filter pad on top of the wet dry. There's a little bit of water on the top of the filter, but I don't see anything. And the sides are dry, the water levels where it should be. Let's go downstairs and see just how realistic this, this flood of water from above actually is. This is our fish man. Hi. Can you check it out? Yeah, come on in. Bless you. Has it stopped or is it still going? No, it, it has stopped. Okay. For sure. Does that switch do absolutely nothing up there? Because like 10 minutes after he touched The that switch, switch, that's has, no, it's a separate battery operated air pump. Okay. All right, well, what I suspect it is, is there's a filter that sits below the aquarium. There's a filter pad in it. The filter pad got plugged. Some of that water backed up, spilled over the edge of the filter. For whatever reason, it stopped upstairs now, and it's also stopped dripping. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I would just assume that drying it up would uh, resolve the problem and I'll just change the filter pad upstairs. And Why did it get clogged? It has to be changed every two weeks and just over time it gets so dirty enough that the resistance behind it causes it to back up a little bit. And my normal service time is every other Thursday, yesterday, but we just moved the appointment to this coming Monday. <laughs> so had I been here for yesterday's service, that yeah. would have been changed. Um, right. But uh, that's what I suspect it is, so... Um. And my suspicions are confirmed. If you take a close look, you can see that the filter pad is rather dirty. As it becomes restricted, water backs up behind it. Now, if you take a look behind the wet-dry filter, it has these aluminum struts, which is what the wall is built out of. This lower foundation strut appears to have water in it. Look at here. So that's where the water from the wet-dry trickle filter, which spilt over its edge, has collected. A little bit of it spilled out of that aluminum strut, unfortunately did not go into the floor drain, simply straight down through the floor joist itself. So other than the filter pad sitting across the top of the wet-dry trickle filter, which appears to have gotten plugged up, some of that water has overflowed the top of the filter over the back side, and that's where the source of the leak or the drip downstairs is from. What I'm going to do today is simply change the filter pad and dry up that little puddle of water and then I'll go back downstairs and see if I can offer some assistance to the people downstairs. But uh, yes, there was an overflow, truly minimal, caught in enough time. And of course the aquarium service guy is Johnny on the spot. So not only does it turn out that the situation is really quite minor, but in comparison to the last time that this tank had a leak, which was catastrophic, one of the canister filters through the bottom of the tank had sprung one of its clips and the cap had opened up, allowing the water, 100% of it, to drain out of the tank and down through the floor, down to the first floor. It was a very uncomfortable and awkward situation. Not only had I not had my liability policy in place yet, having only acquired the account personally myself weeks before, but you still have to deal with the life that was in the tank, which was at the time freshwater fish, but regardless, freshwater fish or saltwater fish all need water, and this tank had no water in it. But that was then, and this is now. We've, at this point, eliminated the canister filters out of the loop, so the wet-dry trickle filter really is the only place where filtration takes place. And in addition to the external overflow, the top of the wet-dry trickle filter is a place where I'll perform mechanical filtration or place a filter pad to trap out particles. This is an attempt to compensate for what those canister filters did previously. So now that we've got things under control, let's take a quick look at the tank. And oh, by the way, dog leg tank? Well, if you take a look at the tank, it has three bends in it, like a dog leg. Hence the name, dog leg tank. So that was a fairly easy resolution. It is one of the realities that when you put a filter pad in the way of water flow and that filter pad's designed to trap particles and debris, sooner or later it's going to become restricted. Why it became restricted so much quicker this time, I don't know. Uh, normally that's never been a problem, but they are feeding a ton of food upstairs and maybe for whatever reason a lot of it seemed to go over the overflow or whatever. Anyhow, a uh, minimal amount of water lost. The people downstairs seem a little irritated but that's probably because it's not the first time. But at this point I did go downstairs and make sure that they were happy and kind of apologized. Uh, if there's any uh, damage it's probably just a, a ceiling panel and maybe some frustrations. Um, so again, um, the fish guy was pretty lucky. Uh, there have been some incidents in the past that were pretty significant or pretty severe. 
<laughs> I recall once where a 300 gallon shark tank drained itself about halfway uh, and I waited across the room uh, to try to unplug the electrical. But this obviously was not one of those situations, which uh, always can be a concern. So things seem to be under control this morning, thanks to the fish guy. And we can move on forward with uh, our other aquarium services today. Johnny on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> 